Hello and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us on our um, on our third Microsoft webinar. And um, I'm hoping today that uh, you will uh, be able to take away some new hints and tips and learn some some really useful things uh, that you'll be able to use within your own establishments. So if we could just move on, please. OK, so to basically to give you a little bit of information about us as a school. So Ribblesdale High School is based within Cliverow and we're a local authority school with 11 to 16 um, with a mixed cohort of around about 13,000 students. Our students come from a, a vast range of different backgrounds and at this moment in time we currently have over 1,000 of those students with their own Windows 10 one-to-one -one device. Now that means that we're in quite a fortunate position, obviously within um, within the times that we are currently in. However, um, we have been using this blended learning approach um, within school um, and also now during remote learning um, at home. Um, and um, a lot of the hints and tips that we do give today and um, we'll be able to take in hopefully in any establishment. Now, obviously the future. OK, so when we think of the future at the moment, we're, we're not too clear on how that's going to look. But one thing I, I am quite certain of is that school, as, as we probably have known it, will not get back to normal for, for some time. And that means that there will be a period of transition where we need to make sure that we can provide a safe working environment for some or all of our pupils through remote means for probably up until Christmas or, or maybe even afterwards. OK, um, so we need to make sure that we take these steps and we make sure that we have things in place to make sure that our pupils and our whole communities are safe and secure when they are um, when they're in work and, and when they are learning from home. So one thing that um, we are uh, would like to, to bring your attention to is that we are part of an EdTech Demonstrator School Consortium and there are three schools within this consortium, um, each of us with a different specialism. Um, obviously Ribblesdale is uh, specializes in Microsoft uh, technology, but the other two um, schools will also uh, have specialisms in other things as well. So if at any time you would like any unique free personal support if you would like to go to the website that we currently have okay which is being displayed on the screen um, and fill in the form and um, that will actually go through the uh, london grid uh, for learning and they will get back in contact with us and that will allow us to open up communications with yourselves to give you, um, you bespoke personal support in um, in ed tech and, and making sure that that is uh, running uh, smoothly and being able to get that implementation within your own schools or establishments. Now, OK, what I would like to now do is, is just introduce you to um, my colleague who is Louise um, Jeeves. Louise is um, she she's like uh, quite shy about it, but she is an <laughs> award winning teacher um, of using technology and she is just uh, currently going to take you through how this technology is currently being used within Ribblesdale. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. OK, everyone, so um, yeah, I'm going to take you through what it looks like um, with us at Ribblesdale um, <clears throat> and hopefully give you some hints and tips on how we've used it and how you could potentially use it moving forward. Um, OK, so the first thing that I'd just like to draw your attention to is whilst being part of this training, you are able to um, redeem your code on the Microsoft Educator Centre. If you're not already part of this, you can sign up with it um, using your email address and you can redeem the achievement code. So the achievement code's just displayed on the screen. Um, I would encourage you to redeem that. Um, it allows you to get some points and also gets you started. There are hundreds of courses on there to help with your own personal CPD. You can share it within schools. Um, so it's a really fantastic resource. If you are already doing this and you're interested in becoming an MIE, or an MIE expert, um, there we will be hosting a application support webinar on Wednesday, the 24th of June. Um, and as you can see, the link is um, displayed on this PowerPoint um, there as well that will be shared afterwards. OK, 
Okay, so how have we set it up at Ribblesdale? What do the procedures and day-to-day -day structure, um, what do they look like? So the first thing that we decided to do as a school was to upload the work into the class materials area of the files tabs on Teams. Um, this was just to ensure that we had a master copy and the pupils can then download that and save it into their own area. Um, it's a lot more simple, the pupils can access it and obviously none of the pupils can overwrite what each other has done. Uh, checking in with form tutors, this was really important for us from a safeguarding perspective and also for monitoring the well-being of our pupils, um, especially in these unprecedented times. It's so important for them to have that regular contact. So we do use teams for checking in with our form tutors. In terms of how we've structured the lessons, we've done them half an hour per timetabled lesson. So, for example, if a pupil's got English once on one day, they will have half an hour of work to do for that lesson. Um, we haven't stuck to the school timetable as we are aware of the commitments uh, that pupils may have outside of school. But we did want to maintain some routine. And also, I think it's really important for the pupils to be very comfortable in using this way of working before they were overloaded with any kind of um, work. So the submission of work and the monitoring and the engagement that come hand in hand, um, they've been done in various ways uh, through Teams, using OneNote, um, and I will talk about that briefly um, in a little while. And safeguarding as well, um, that's been absolutely key. Like I said, it's really important, and we have done that in various ways by checking and monitoring, making sure all our pupils and their well-being is, is okay. So in terms of the academic work then that we have been setting as a school, um, it's been really important that we've done it in short bursts um, and it's important that we've made it very engaging for the pupils. Um, we've done that through various different platforms. So we've used Microsoft Stream, Microsoft Forms and other interactive platforms just to keep that um, engagement there and keep those pupils excited about, about doing some work. We've still um, made opportunities for discussion. I think that's really important from a teaching and learning perspective that these pupils are still having the opportunity to develop their oral um, skills. And you can obviously do the question and answer feature in Teams with the live lessons as you do have the hands up feature, which is fantastic. In terms of scheduling work, you can do this through assignments um, and Lily will be talking to you a little bit more about this later on. Uh, and again, you can create from existing there to really help with teacher workload as well. And again, Lee will be speaking a little bit more about that. In terms of how we have set up the work, we started by building on prior knowledge. Um, so to begin with, when we went into lockdown with remote working, um, we began this way. So pupils became comfortable in the role of remote working, first of all, um, just to avoid them becoming overwhelmed with the, with the amount of work. And it also gave us an opportunity to consolidate any key learning that had taken place in school and allowed those pupils to be really confident with what they were doing uh, to begin with. We are going to start introducing new um, in new topics and new information to the pupils. But again, this will be quite slow and very subtle. Um, but obviously, people are conscious that, you know, you want to narrow that learning gap as much as you possibly can. Um, and I think it's also important to really engage the pupils and motivate them um, to perhaps avoid them becoming quite complacent with the work that they are being set. Um, so I think it's important that they are getting a good range, a, a varied diet of work. So in terms of how we've been delivering the work to the pupils, they've been done through a vast um, amount of ways. But one of the ways is the live and pre-recorded lessons. Um, the way that we've done this, it's been quite important to have them quite short and concise. You don't want to necessarily be speaking for um, the a whole hour or, or even the 30 minutes of, of, the, of the lesson. It's just an opportunity for the pupils to hear your voice. Um, and also for you to kind of address any misconceptions or elaborate on certain elements that's perhaps easier verbally than it, than it perhaps would be if you were writing it down. It, you can also use these live and pre-recorded lessons for additional support for certain pupils. Um, you can record these video clips and upload them. And I will be showing you how to do that through Microsoft Stream later on. This has been great for teacher workload and well-being. Um, staff have been able to pre-record lessons in advance of the lessons themselves and if any um, issues have, ar have arisen at home where they've not necessarily been able to get that work out uh, they have had the opportunity to upload a video that they've already recorded so it's allowed staff to get on top of of what needs to be done so that's been brilliant and in terms of giving pupils the opportunity to re-watch the content it's saved so much time with the pupils asking questions which obviously we do encourage but sometimes the pupils aren't necessarily looking back at things or rereading something so the opportunity to rewatch the content's been fantastic um, and the pupils have really been able to problem solve themselves um, and check the information and again you can do this 
through PowerPoint Recorder, which we demonstrated in an earlier webinar, and also through Microsoft Stream, which I will be uh, demonstrating in this webinar. Now might just be a quick time just before I go on to this slide, just to mention if you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat um, of this webinar and myself and Lee will try and answer as many questions as we possibly can. So please feel free to pop them in there. OK, so in terms of tracking engagement, then this seems to be a buzzword throughout remote working and um, learning. Everybody wants to know how to track the engagement of the pupils. So there's just a couple of ways on here that we've done it at school. So the first one is Insight. This is a tab that you can add into your Microsoft Teams and it allows you to track the activity of either a whole class or individuals. Um, so as you can see, there's a couple of boxes on the right hand side there. You've got the digital activity. So that's um, as a class. You've also got the communication activity, so how many likes, comments, how many um, points of that have they interacted with. Um, and again, it's been great to see that real visual element um, to see what pupils have accessed and what they haven't accessed. In terms of OneNote, that's also fantastic for tracking the engagement with the review student work feature, which is available in there. And obviously, if the pupil's name is in bold you know that they need to that they have put some work onto that one note page so it's really quick and easy for you to see that visual aid and um, again something that the pupils at Ribblesdale are very used to using um, but with a bit of training it's, it, it is quite easy for people to get on board with that assignments is a great way of tracking engagement I won't talk too much about that because Lee's going to be discussing that with you but again it does give you that visual aid and you can see what assignments have been turned in and um, if it's not been turned in it means the pupils haven't viewed it so it's a real good way of being able to figure out which pupils are accessing the work which aren't checking in with those pupils making sure they're okay seeing if there's any issues or anything that you can support with support with further okay so just a few quick wins uh, with Microsoft Teams couple of things for you so it's the distribution of resources following a timetabled lesson so we haven't done uh, the distribution of resources on a Monday for the entire week um, we have drip fed the resources day by day so the pupils aren't overwhelmed and they have a clear understanding of what needs to be done each day and that's worked really really well we've had some fantastic feedback from pupils and parents and guardians about how we've structured that so that's a real key key element Using the announcements to grab the attention of the pupils. Again, you can do this with staff um, if you're in staff meetings or anything like that. But obviously, this is just from a teaching and learning perspective um, to grab the attention. Within the announcements, you can put banners, colours, you can upload pictures as well, just making them a bit different for, for pupils to see. You can mark posts or announcements as important. Again, that makes it really clear to the pupils. Um, it comes up with a little exclamation mark on the right hand side and a red barrier down the side and it's also the first thing that the pupils click on when they go to that team and again use of class assignments to help track engagement and that's something that Lee um, is going to discuss and showcase. So whilst I've just talked about teams and how they've um, how we've used that for remote for remote learning, there are several other strategies that you can use. Um, these are just a couple that we've used at school. So again we've got Flipgrid, they've been great for doing interactive um, check-ins and questions and and things like that for the pupils to get really involved with minecraft the education edition has been great gcse pod being able to set assignments that marks work for you which is fantastic soundcloud OneNote, learning by questions and obviously microsoft forms down there as well so there's just a couple more strategies and um, again like lee said if you want any more support with any of these remote learning strategies or anything we do discuss in the webinar today please feel free to contact us through the uh, demonstrator school website that was advertised on on the slide as well OK, so I'm just going to pop that up there whilst we see if we have any questions. Again, that's just the code to redeem your achievement code on the Microsoft Educator Centre. And if you want to take any information off that slide, please feel free. Lee. OK, and uh, thank you very much for that, Louise. OK, um, so first thing is, is just to, to let everybody know that we are recording today's session and after we record it and um, we do place this on our EdTech website, which we shared at the start of um, the, the webinar. And um, I will also send out an email um, about a day or two after this webinar, just with all of the video content, with the feedback and, and any information which we feel which would be able to support you as well. So, OK, it, it's basically my time at this moment in time to do um, a live demonstration. And what we like to do is we like to be able to basically demonstrate uh, live how we do things to try and give some hints and tips. 
So the first thing that we do have is if you just bear with me, sorry, I've got Louise there on, on, on the screen <laughs> um, and I will just uh, just minimise there. OK, so one of the, the first things that was asked for us uh, in the feedback when we when we send out uh, the information is, is to try and get a little bit more of an understanding of how these files work and, for example, as well, how we can use assignments a little bit more effectively. Now, what we have to understand is whenever we post anything within a conversation within Teams, okay, it will automatically save that file or a copy of that file into your files structure. Okay. Now, if you don't put that file in to the correct file or folder, sorry, shall I say, sorry, if you don't put it within a correct folder and um, when you automatically upload an image, OK, it will just put it, say, for example, in the in the root of the, the folder. So if I just show you this as an example, so this is a test. And let's say, for example, I wanted to upload um, a, an image or a a file just from my computer um, and if I just go to my desktop um, and I say this webinar and if I just open that okay it will take a little bit of time okay and if you do not select correctly where you want to upload it okay it will just put it into the root of the file so that's extremely important and um, to be fair as well this is actually a new feature which microsoft has uh, has just um introduced um as this never used to pop up so this is actually going to help an awful lot with um with uploading your files so you choose the, the correct location and you just upload that file now the Older document. Now, what that basically means is that means every single pupil or every single person within that team can edit that file and they can all do it at the same time. So, for example, if I was to uh, post an informational worksheet here for my students to be able to get access to, um, they could actually edit that document. OK, so we need to make sure that we are not placing any documents within this way here that we don't want our students to to be able to edit okay the suggestion would be to post for example pdf files here so they if they're information documents um, it it's not an issue because you can't edit that pdf file but over here on files, anything that you do want to be a read only file, we need to make sure that we place within this class materials folder. And then you are able to create your folder structure in here if you would like. So you could say, for example, unit one, and that means that any work, any files within this folder are only read only uh, files and, and your students or members of staff can't accidentally um, edit uh, the, those documents. Now just to give you a little bit more information about this because sometimes this is a, a little bit of a confusion. What we're looking at here is we're looking at a SharePoint. OK, now SharePoint is based also on Office 365. So if we press open in SharePoint, OK, this will actually open up uh, within um, the Office 365 platform and it gives you just a little bit more control. So for example, OK, what we've now got here is we've, we can see all of the files exactly as we can within Teams, but we sometimes have a little bit more control to be able to move things. OK, so if I wanted to move this make code micro bit and I wanted to place it into my unit one, I can now do that a little bit more easy with just clicking on the three little dots. Those three little dots are brilliant. Whenever you see them, we're on an Office 365 platform, press them and it will give you so many more hint, um, options. And I can simply press move to and it just over here gives you the correct um, sort of structures. So I might just say, well, I want to move that file to a webinar um, and I want to move it into class materials and I'd like to move it into unit one. Now what a lot of you would have noticed there is when I was moving that file, when you press move, um, it also gave you the option of all the other teams that I was a part of. So if you, for example, as you can see, and I've got 
these are just different um, teams that I'm a part of. But if I press browse sites, you will see that there is um, all of my files and all of my teams here that I am a, currently a part of. Um, and that means that I can quickly and easily transfer files between different teams. And it means that, um, for example, if I want one file um, into, um, so like, let's say, for example, a worksheet for my students, I can copy and paste that very, very quickly into all of my um, different classes. So it means that I don't need to, to be repetitive on that, on that action. And all I'm doing there is going by uh, pressing the option to, to take me to SharePoints. Now, just in case you missed where that was, it is just here. OK, now we have to remember that all Teams is, is a digital hub. It just all it does is it just looks at Office 365 and gives it into a way in and a way that we we like to understand. So anything that we're looking at here, we can always go and view within the Office 365 platform as well. OK, so that's really one of the the, the important things that has come back on feedback um, being able to just a, a simple source of how that works. Now, one of the things that I, I am going to show um, in today's session is the assignments feature. So the assignments feature is a wonderful, um, a wonderful um, plugin that we have for in uh, using within uh, Microsoft Teams. Because what this allows me to do is this allows me to set work for my classes. I can then distribute it um, when I would like to to those classes. But also it means that I just need to write that document once or that piece of work once, and then it allows me to to send it to multiple classes whenever I want in a very easy, quick way. So I'm just going to show you how I would do that, OK? So at this moment in time, if I wanted to create a new document, OK, I simply press Create, OK? And it gives us some options here. Now, I'm just going to show you, um, I'm going to create a, a blank one at the start, and then I will show you how to do it from an existing one. So if I create a blank um, an assignment, so this is an assignment that I've never done before. I simply get a, a interface like this. Now this interface, I'm sure a lot of you will be used to because it's it's very similar in a lot of the other homework or remote learning apps um, that, that some of you might be familiar with. So for example, I could just do week. Um, now at the moment we're on week nine, so we label our assignments by the weeks. Week nine, and I might say, um, just a test activity, OK? Um, and then all we do is we, we just give simple instructions here on what the pupils need to do um, to complete the activity. Um, and this is any information they need, any links that you might want them to get to so we can add different resources. So for example, um, I might want them to access um, a logo or a, a you know a different file that I want them to go to say for example GCSE pod um, or a PowerPoint presentation that we have on there that will upload that file and once that file is uploaded I can press done and that makes that available for students okay now the thing that we need to remember as well that is unique to the students it is a read only file OK, and sorry, not a read only file. It is an editable file, but it is unique and a personal document to that student. So it is just like I've printed out 30 different sheets and I've given each student within that class their own sheet. So they are able to work on that document, which is just there. OK, we can then decide on do we want this to have any points? OK, so do you want to have it a grade, um, for example, out of 10? Um, I myself never put that because I tend to like a rubric, a rubric instead. So just to show you what a rubric is. Now, if I add a rubric, OK, so what I've got here is I've already got um, a coursework example. So I'm just going to select it and I'm just going to press next. And what I've got here, this is basically um, a well, it's a rubric. It's it's an easy way for the um, for the teacher to mark students' work. So this is an example I've taken from technology where they have some coursework. So the way that technology coursework works is everything is marked on a different element. Okay, so the development of the design proposal, and then they've given out of four marks for this section. And I think this is actually based off the way that they they mark their a piece of coursework. And then if I want to go to the next section, I can add a new row and I can add, let's say, for example, the um, implementation or um, 
evaluation um, or whatever you you know whatever we want to development of product and then I can just simply enter more criteria okay and then if I want to I can give it more um, points if I want so I can say this is also 100% or just evenly redistribute the weights which obviously that that depends on your type of course that you do um because I know that myself as a computer scientist we have different weighted for, for different sections um, and then when you're happy with with developing this rubric we can just attach and all that does is it makes it a lot faster for us as teachers to be able to mark um, students work and then we can simply say where do we want this to assign to okay so I'm just going to assign this to this team at the moment but as you can see if I press this you'll be able to see all of my classes so if I choose to, I can assign it to one class, I can assign it to two different classes, I can assign it to a lot more than just one class. Now, as Louise said in how we do it within Ribblesdale, we only assign work for the class when we teach them within a timetable. So I would only assign it to one class at once. OK, and this is a new feature that's only just appeared. Now, what this allows, OK, so if you get a new if, if you've set an assignment to a class and then you get a new student within that class a couple of weeks later, you can decide on whether or not they see this assignment. OK, so if we do edit here, I can decide whether or not the new student within your class will see that assignment. So there's two ways of thinking of that. Obviously, it could overload a brand new student if you've used Teams and they could see 27, 30 different assignments and it could be quite overwhelming for them. Or you could see it as, you know, if they finish their work, they can go back and they can complete or they can access past assignments that you've set. So you as a teacher can decide on how that works. OK, and then we can either select the whole of the class which is all students, or you can specifically pick out certain students that you want. OK, now this is great for if you're um, if you want to send different materials to different students. OK, um, and obviously you would just need to make sure that you name your title in the correct way so you know which students are getting the correct assignments. And then we've got our standard due date. OK, and our um, time and then assignment will a post immediately with late turn and this is also a very new um, new one that I've not actually seen as well so what I can do now is I can actually schedule this to um, happen or assign to different um, in a different day okay so if I wanted to I could assign it straight away or I could assign it for two three days in the future now this is extremely new as it wasn't on here uh, when I demonstrated this um, only four or five days ago. OK, so this is a, a new feature that we also have here. And then we've got this section here. Now, once again, um, now what this allows us to do is this allows us to choose the channel where you want to post it. So, for example, if I'm creating a key stage four assignment, it makes more sense to put it in key stage four and it becomes less cluttered. It means students know where to find it. If you've decided to set up your channels as units, you would then set the correct work in the correct channel and it just makes it a little bit easier for your students to be able to find that and then when you're happy with it you simply press assign okay and all that does is it takes a little bit of a moment okay and once it's signed assigned it will automatically put a notification in the channel with a little one informing anybody in that team something's happened and they will then see it which is just like this so have the title and then what they can do is they can simply press the view assignment and OK, it will at the moment you're seeing a, a teacher's view um, but they will then be able to see um, bear with me. I, I should have pressed the other button there um, they will see this view which is this um, their their view um, so they'll have all of their instructions they'll have any materials that they've they've been completing and they will also see the success criteria that you've attached so they can sit click on that success criteria and they can actually make sure that they can see that when they're completing their work and another really good thing about it is it says students work here now students work has an attached file so if they wanted to they could also attach other materials for you that you can actually be able to see as well 
so how does this look okay so this is how you would see it okay and all we would have to do is simply click on that um, piece of work and i can see all of the students work here however this is not the best one to show as an example i will show this one so if i click here on a document now this is obviously a, a demo team that we've done but this is a document and this is the students work okay and all i can simply do is simply go through each student's work and i can provide them feedback okay unfortunately i've not placed a rubric on this one so i'll show you how that looks as well okay and i can go through and i can mark all of those students work now i do know that this student has completed some work so as you can see that student has got work there they've uh, added some documents on i can say well done this is great and then that will go back to the student and inform them that you've marked their work and that's a nice quick simple way to be able to do that and once again in other things that we've shown it also has the immersive reader for the students they can edit the documents um, and all the normal sort of tools that we have within the Office 365 package are still available here as well. So just to show you how this would look um, with a rubric. OK, so I did this test activity. So the rubric just appears like that. And as a teacher, I can simply press what I want to give them. And then when I'm happy with it, I can press done. So in all fairness, we do not actually have to provide any written personalized feedback and then I can press return and that will go back to the student to say that that's where that work has actually been assigned and it notifies them that you've done that and that you've uh, that you've marked that piece of work and um, obviously this this just happens naturally as well. So if as long as you're marking the work and students are completing that work, all teacher, all pupil for you know dialogue and feedback is all there and is all saved automatically and it's something that is obviously better because it's happening naturally rather than um rather than you know being a, a kind of oh we, we have to do this you know this is something that we do as a teacher anyway to provide um feedback for our students to be able to improve their work and by using this platform it just happens naturally on on, on that occurrence okay and um the last section of, of assignments is just to show you how once you've done one it makes it extremely easy so if i press create again and i now go from existing okay so if i press from existing it will now show you all of my classes okay and all i need to do is click a class um let's say let's go 7w and if i press that class they're the assignments as you can see Week one, two, three, four. Uh, this must be a Monday class uh, because we don't have week. Oh, yes, we do. Week five up here at the top, six and seven. These are the different works that I've set my class. So if I say, for example, OK, let's have a little look at our Minecraft Hour of Code. I simply compress it. I press next. There's the assignment for that class. OK. With a, a video that I've actually shared and created, which Louise is going to show you how that works. OK, it takes a little bit of a moment to um, to bring over all the files and all the instructions for the students. OK, and then I can simply press assign. So once I've got that one document, um, it actually provides, um, you know, it actually saves me as a teacher an awful lot of time because I do not have to keep replicating that work. And obviously, um, if you set up your teams in the correct way, um, for example, what I mean by that is as a computer science department, the whole of our computer science department, first of all, posts their assignment in our computer science department team and that means that we create a bank of all of these resources and then from that team i just share consistently and um, to all of my different classes so I, i'm going to have that bank of assignments there in my computer science team from from now from hopefully a good couple of years um, and i can just keep resharing them whenever i think they are appropriate and that is the the end of uh, the demo for for when it comes to assignments okay um and i will just stop to ask um louise if there are currently uh, any questions uh, about that at this moment in time hi lee yeah we've just got one um can you edit or write on pupils work when marking it in the assignments 
Great question. Um, yes, you can do. Um, probably something I should have shown you, to be fair. OK, so I will do that right now. OK, so if I do this as an example um, and I go to this light bot here, I can uh, click on to the student. And if I just go to the one that I want, OK, up here at this top. OK, this is an edit document. This is a document that I can press and you can choose either one of two things. You can either edit in the browser or you can edit in the desktop app. OK, so if as long as you press, well, I so used to editing in the desktop app. Um, sorry, in the uh, desktop app, but it, it really doesn't matter. Um, and it just allows you then to be able to also add comments into the student's work. And then once you're happy, you simply close. OK, and then if we look back at that person's work, um, we should see it might take a moment to sync. OK, but as you can see, there's my document there. So. Uh, within Ribblesdale, we have uh, all of our teachers have styluses. So what we do is we write on our screen um, and that allows us to highlight. OK, so we have uh, different highlighting colours that we use to be able to identify the different things for students. So if we see an error, we would highlight it um, rather than writing on it. And a student knows that that's where an error is. OK, thank you. OK, is there any more questions, Louise? Uh, no, that's all. Thank you. Lee. OK, fantastic. OK, so what we're going to do now is Louise is now going to take you through um, Stream, OK, which is a fantastic tool to be able to record uh, lessons and also provide simple little guides. This is something that we're going to be doing on our website very soon, and we're going to have short, quick snippets of how to guides and quick wins so teachers and educators can be able to dip into them to when when they would like to okay so i will now pass you on to louise thank you thank you okay so yeah i'm going to talk you through uh, microsoft stream so the first thing um i want to just draw your attention to is some of the features that i am going to discuss here in stream um only work in the new microsoft edge so if you haven't got this new microsoft edge here at the bottom you just have to download that um, and then all of these features that I'm going to talk to you about today will be accessible. So if you when you open a new tab in Microsoft Edge in the new one, uh, you will see your waffle up on the top left. If you just click on there and head to stream, it will then take you to uh, Microsoft Stream that I'm going to talk to you about today. If you haven't, you just simply go to it as normal, um, portal.office.com and it will it will take you through to this page. So as you can see on the home page on Microsoft Stream, um, there are videos here at the top that are trending, if you will. And these are videos that have the most traction. So these are videos that have been um, watched the most. So it's quite easy to be able to access the most popular videos within that organisation um, that you are in. Obviously, this is to do with permissions. So once the videos have been um, uploaded onto Stream, the permissions just allow these ones to be organisation wide. Again, down here, um, these are all resources for you to be able to share with your colleagues within your organisations. And it's plenty on there for CPD. Um, there's some great, fantastic, in-depth information on there. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but it's great to have a little look at all of those as well <clears throat> if you're on there. So I'm going to take you through just some of these tabs at the top. So the first one we've got is Discover. That we're going to have a look at discovering videos. So again, these are videos that are available to me um, as they've been recorded by others and myself, but the permissions on there allow them to be organisation wide. So there's all of our meetings, there's assemblies, there's training. There's a lot, a lot of information and content on there that you can um, have a look at. So what you can do with this is you can share them um, with certain people. And you can also add them to a watch list, which then allows you to um, add that to your list to then be able to have a look at it, have a look at it later on. We're going to have a look in terms of discovering channels. So channels, these can be created by anybody. They can be created by yourself. Um, they can be created for departments, for activities. Um, as you can see, we've got ones for RE. We've got the Year 7 Lessons and Help that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. Uh, we've got ones from pupils. So again, you can create your channels in there. We've got people and we've also got groups. The groups are great to organise content in terms of um, 
that are specific to those groups or those classes. And if you do record anything, like a live lesson or upload a video into a certain team, then the, they go automatically into um, these groups. So it's really organised, it's streamlined, it's great for yourself and it's great for the pupils as well. So that's Discover. We're going to have a quick look at Create. So there's a different way of creating your own content on stream. You can upload your own videos. So again, you can drag files in here or browse them. Um, so you can upload anywhere from your devices. So this could be a PowerPoint um, recording that you've decided to do, or it can be anything that you've downloaded. Um, you can upload it into this area. You can also record the screen, which is a new feature from Microsoft. And this is a great, great feature that I'm going to showcase um, for you now. Again, down the bottom, you can see you've got options for camera and for microphone. I'm just going to turn those off because obviously I'm delivering this at the same time. Um, and again, when you select to record, there's a couple of different options um, that you have here at the top. You can record your entire screen, an application window or a Microsoft Edge tab. You just need to be mindful if you do choose the application window or the Microsoft Edge tab, if you then bounce from one to the other um, and want the video to follow, it won't do. It'll only follow that tab. So it might be an idea just to record the entire screen. Once you select what you want to record, if you're perhaps going to share a video, you need to share audio as well. And then anything that you play will be recorded onto the video. And again, you'll be able to share that with your pupils. Click share. OK, and as you can see, now it's starting to record. So I can, for example, click on here. I could talk somebody through how to apply, discuss the course, discuss the program. Go all the way down here. If I'd shared the audio, I could play the YouTube video and they'd be able to hear it and I'd be able to talk and give a few pointers. Then when you finish the recording, you've got a couple of options. You can either stop sharing here or you can go straight back to the tab. I'm just going to click stop sharing here. Go back to Microsoft Stream. And here you can see the recording that is here for us to view. You've got the option to record again. So if you play it back and you've missed something out or perhaps you were slightly nervous when you do the first one, because it comes to us all, um, you might want to go back and re-record it. Then once you have done it, you simply click upload to stream. When you get to this point, you obviously include your name, description. So I'm just going to call this test. A description, the video language, English, and allow everyone in your company to view this video. You can either obviously have that on or off. It's totally up to you. That's just to do with the permissions um, within there. Once you've simply clicked that, you click publish. And that is now available. If you go to video, that is now available in your Microsoft stream, in my content, in videos. And you'll see there that this video is up here. It's processing. Once you've got this video in your area, so you're in my content and you're in videos, once you're in here, there's several things that you can do with this. So the first one is add to a watch list. Um, again, you can put it on there just to be able to, something you might want to rewatch, something you might want to be revisiting. Um, you can add it to groups or channels, which I'm going to show you in a second. You can edit, um, so you can update the video details. So again, you can update the name, the description, selecting certain thumbnails. You, you can add it, the permissions are in here. So if you want everyone in your company to be able to view it, that must be ticked. Or if you want specific groups or people or channels, then again, you need to make sure you're adding those to this area. I'm going to show you that in a second. And comments are on on this one. So this will allow people to interact with the video and ask comments. So when it comes to my content, then this is almost like your filing cabinet, your filing cabinet of videos um, <clears throat> that you can quite easily access all the time. So again, at the minute, we're on my content, we're in videos. Then obviously at the top, you've got groups. So these groups are specific to the classes that I teach. Um, so again, really easy, really streamlined, really straightforward for me to be able to access those classes. Again, channels this is what I'm going to show you about creating on here. So within channels, um, at the minute, we've got year seven lessons and help. So we're going to just create a new channel. We're going to create in here and this is going to be our webinar. Help. Um, And we're going to we're going to add this to a group. So we're going to add this to the webinars channel. So again, you can upload an image. Once you've done it, you simply click create and you'll see there we have got webinar help for this one. 
Now to add our content to this, it's quite simple. You would go into my content and into your videos. Once you're in there, you will then see that you've got the option with this little button here, add to group slash channel. You click on there. I want to add it to a channel that I've just created. I'm going to search for the channel. Search for the channel. Obviously, the people that are in this group, I just want them to be able to view it. I don't necessarily want them to be owners of these videos. I just want them to be able to view it. So once you pop the channel in there and click save, you will then find that in your channels, in your new channel that you've created, you have already got one video ready, ready in there. So I'm just going to quickly talk to you about how you can then add this into Teams. Um, it's a really great way of being able to streamline all the learning for the pupils, to have all the videos in one place. And also because Teams is integrated with so many different apps, it's a fantastic way of having everything in one place so the pupils don't need to be um, bouncing, bouncing here, there and everywhere from them. So if we're going into my content and we're going into channels, this is the channel that we're going to upload into our team. So we simply just click the three dots and we simply just click share. We want to share the channel, so we're going to copy the code. And then we're going to go back into Microsoft Teams. We're going to be in webinars. And at the top, you'll see the plus sign where we're going to add a new tab. Once you click on there, you find stream. And you can you can just upload individual videos. So if you're doing it for certain classes and it's perhaps just one video that you might be uploading, or again, it could be a weekly message that you want to upload for your form tutor group or something like that, or it might be a department briefing. If you're just uploading a simple video, then you would just click video and do the exact same process in terms of sharing the URL. Um, but obviously we're going to upload a channel because it's got mul it will have multiple videos within it. Once you've done it, you just paste that into there. The name's already there, post a channel, and then you will click save. This will then pop up at the top here. And as you will notice, the video comes across quite quickly. It really does link really, really well and syncs quite fast. Um, and what's really good about this is if you then do any more recordings on certain channels or teams, or you upload any videos into this channel, it'll automatically sync it with what is on Teams. So it, you don't have to worry about copying over the URL again, making sure that it's synced. It will automatically do it for you. And um, so you won't have to spend any time, any time doing that. So it's just a really great way of having everything in one place for the pupils to access it quite quickly and easily. And also a way of you of perhaps monitoring what you've set the pupils, what you've discussed with them, um, just to avoid any sort of confusion um, and to make sure that learning follows that good good curve. Okay, have we got any questions? Yeah, yeah, no questions have actually appeared at the moment. It must have been a very thorough explanation. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so really just, just to move on, obviously the, there are so many different aspects of Microsoft Teams that we can cover. So in the, in the last couple of sessions, we have tried to cover a, a variety of different things that we think that, you know, a lot of us will want to use within our own teaching. But um, we, we also want to keep doing this as well. So we have another webinar um, in two weeks time from today. And on this one, we will be looking at some of the app integrations that actually go with Microsoft Teams and, and how we can use them for, for learning. So the likes of, um, let's say, for example, the likes of Flipgrid or Wakelet or Quizlet, some of them which a lot of us would be already for very familiar with and probably use within our classrooms already. Um, Microsoft Teams is that digital hub integrates extremely easy with these different um, different platforms and it just allows us to keep bringing it in so we can engage our students and uh, in so many different ways. So, OK, um, as we're coming to the end of our, of our webinar, we're just going to basically give you a, a couple of things of probably what we, we should be thinking about at the moment. OK, so. Um, yourself and your next steps, OK, what we would, would suggest is review the current procedures that you currently have in place and, and have a specific focus on keeping students safe whilst remote learning. Now, that's an extremely important part. Never mind, uh, you know, it is, as well as learning, they also have to keep a healthy and, and, and um, you know, mindset as well and, and ensure that their well-being is, is, is key. 
Now, another thing that Louise has, has, has shared several times is this Microsoft um, Educator Center, and, and I can't, you know, speak more highly about this as well. Um, this is actually uh, the first point of call where we direct our staff for CPD, whether they want to use Microsoft Teams or any type of platform that the Microsoft software offers, um, offers as well as teaching pedagogy. Um, if you go on to the, the Microsoft um, Educator Center, um, you will certainly find courses there that support everybody. And the last thing is, is if you are interested about receiving this, uh, you know, support from ourselves and, and our consortium, it's please go to the um, edtech.ribblesdale.org um, website. I will share that out on an email um, uh, at the end of this webinar. And um, if by filling in that form, you can get personalised support as well, where um, one of the consortium schools, um, the one that meets your needs best, will be able to to help you. Um, within your EdTech journey as well. And I believe uh, that is the end of the webinar. And um, just to, to, to give you some of our social media uh, things that we currently have. So, for example, um, if you want to find us on Twitter, we share lots of ideas um, where we have our Twitter handles there. And if you would like to get onto the Demonstrator School website, that is also there as well. And um, I would just like to say thank you very much for joining us today and um, all the best and uh, I hope everybody keeps safe. Thank you now. Thank you very much.